Okay, we are at the testing grounds for the Alfa Romeo Giulia 2.0 liter tuner box shootout. We're going to be testing this car stock. We're going to be testing it with the TMC Motorsport box. We're going to be testing it with the JB4. And the testing is going to be controlled condition. I'm going to go into that a little bit more. Um, but let me go over and show these boxes here. Hold on a second. Okay, this is them. We got the TMC Motorsports box. Uh, put in a lot of work with TMC to get this box to be as aggressive as possible um, while not triggering any check engine lights. So we're going to be running this on setting 7, which is the absolute most aggressive setting I could get without setting off lights. And then we've got the JB4 back here. We're going to run that on the off-the-shelf map 2, which is their middle aggressiveness setting. That allows me to also run it without running into any check engine lights or anything like that. Now I want to spend just a couple of minutes here talking about the testing that we're going to be doing and, and controlled condition testing because it's so important to get good results. Um, controlling the conditions is absolutely above all else going to be able to give us accurate results. So what does that mean? It means we're going to be doing all the runs in the exact same area with the exact same friction coefficient of the road here because roads, you know, some of them have asphalt, then some of them break over into concrete, uh, sealed, you know, sealed concrete, cement. And so you want to have the same friction coefficient every run that you do. You want to do the runs on the same day because one of the most important variables that will impact time and performance of the vehicle, actual power of the vehicle, is weather. So you can have a 280 horsepower engine like this one that goes up and down 40 horsepower based upon the weather. So in a 95 degree day, this engine might make 260 horsepower. In a 45 degree day, it may make 300 horsepower. And we actually seen that. I've seen it in trap speeds that are different by about 4 miles per hour, which is, well, 1 mile per hour is 10 horsepower. And so what are the other things that we control for uh, when we do testing on the same day? Well, we control for things like miles on the oil. Yes, oil can actually change viscosity slightly over time, and that creates a different friction coefficient in the engine, which can affect very slightly power output. How about things like the tread wear on tires? How about the air pressure in tires that can change over time? If you have different air pressure in the tires, you're going to have a different friction coefficient that goes to the ground. A 25 PSI filled up tire is going to have a very different rolling resistance than a 35 PSI filled up tire. What about things like direction of travel? That's right, we're going to be traveling the same direction so there's the same slope on the road and there is the same wind. Right now, I'm feeling about a 5 to 10 mile an hour wind, and if we were going directly into the wind, that's going to have a very different effect on how uh, fast, how quickly the car is able to accelerate versus if the wind is pushing us at 10 miles an hour. And then finally, an extremely important factor to control for is the intake air temperatures on the vehicle as we start off the run. If you sit here with a car idling, for 10 minutes, the intake air temperatures are going to soar. That's because there's no air going over the heat exchangers that are in the front of the car, and that's how they work. They go air to water, so if there's no air flowing over them, then actually they become heat sinks. And so this car, if we just sat it and then ran it, it would be heat soaked. You could have intake air temperatures that are starting 40 or 50 degrees higher than if you were driving the car smoothly off the boost for 60 miles an hour, then stopped and did a run. So that's huge. So we're going to actually be dialoguing the entire time and make sure we're starting out with intake temperatures that are the same across all runs. Literally the only thing that I can think of that we're not able to really control for perfectly, uh, just because I didn't bring any fuel with me, is that we're probably going to be about 10 pounds lighter by the end of these test runs and we're going to do the TMC testing last. So the TMC is, is going to probably get a slight advantage because the car will be about 10 pounds lighter by the end of the runs. Why? Because we're going to burn a ton of fuel going 0 to 100, 0 to 130 miles an hour. So we'll probably burn a couple gallons of fuel, 15 pounds or so. Now, is that, you know, 15 pounds going to make a difference? Probably not. You know, you're looking at 100 pounds to make probably a tenth of a second difference. So um, I, I, I think we'll be all right there. So it, it might make a hundredth of a second difference, uh, but we're, we're going to give that to TMC. So we're going to get started here. All right, we're cruising and getting the intake temperatures nice and stable. Um, but I want to talk about quickly what performance measures we're going to take. So we're going to use 
um, 40 to 100 mile per hour times and we're going to use trap speeds in the quarter mile. We can also look at what is the difference between the miles per hour trap speed in the eighth of a mile versus the quarter of a mile. All of these are going to be direct indicators of power. What are not indicators of power? Um, many times, zero to 60 times, and then ETs, or the, uh, the, the time that it takes you to get to the end of the quarter mile, these are not very good indicators of power. Uh, examples of that is a 700 horsepower, let's say, Hellcat um, on street tires is very likely, and I've seen it time and time again, to be running 12s. 12 second quarter miles. You put that same car uh, on a prepped track with sticky stuff and with um, drag slicks and that car could run 10 seconds or better. That is a huge amount of difference um, that you would think is a couple of hundred horsepower worth of a difference actually. But in fact, nothing was changed on the vehicle. It was just how it was able to put down. And we don't want to measure that. We want to measure power. So the trap speed, that's the speed that the vehicle's traveling after it crosses the quarter mile mark is what we want to look at. That's not going to be impacted by traction. 40 to 100 miles per hour is not going to be impacted by traction. And the gain in miles per hour from the eighth mile mark to the quarter mile mark is not going to be impacted by traction. So if I'm going 80 miles per hour at the eighth mile mark and then 100 miles an hour at the quarter mile mark, I picked up 20 miles per hour in that last eighth of a mile. However, if I hit 80 miles an hour at the eighth mile mark and I hit 105 miles per hour at the quarter mile mark, I picked up 25 miles per hour in that last eighth of a mile. That is a significant indicator of increased power. So anyway, that's the data we're gonna collect and I'll get back to you as soon as we get to the testing grounds. All right, we are at the test area. We are ready to go. We're gonna do stock run here. Got a density altitude of 1,461 feet. Slope of 0, 0, 0 percent. Not bad. That's a pretty flat surface area. We did good. And uh, we've got a 13.57, but importantly, we have a trap speed of 102.42 miles an hour. And let's go check out the 40 to 100 time. Okay, 40 to 100 time is 9.93 seconds. All right. All right, getting ready for stock run number two here, stabilized intake temps. And we're going to stop at the same exact spot. And let's do it. Fourteen hundred sixty-three foot density altitude. We did thirteen point four eight at one hundred two point nine one miles an hour. And here we have the forty to one hundred mile time, fourteen sixty-three feet again. We had nine point eight three forty to one hundred. All right, we're going to do our third and final stock run here, and get to that same spot again, right here. Let's do it. Alright, let's check the results. Alright, density altitude, 1463 feet. We are at 13.54 at 103.08 miles per hour. And we have now the 40 to 100 mile an hour time of 9.78 seconds. All right, next up is gonna be the JB4. We're on map two and uh, we're getting to the test area here. And we'll check in as soon as we get to the 
the right spot here. Okay, JB4, run one. We've got 13.30 at 104.88 miles per hour. And uh, let's pull out here and go to the 40 to 100 mile an hour. Okay, and 40 to 100, 9.14. Let's do another run. Okay, we're getting ready for run number two with the JB4. And get into the area here. We're at 13.30 at 105.11 miles per hour. Let's look at the 40 to 100. And 40 to 100 is 9.12. And let's do a third one. All right, we're gonna get to run number three with the JP4. And pulling up on the start point now. Here we go. We're at 13.42 at 104.83 miles an hour. Let's check the 40 to 100 mile an hour time. And the 40 to 100 mile an hour is at 9.18. All, right. All right, and we're gonna get ready to do the TMC testing. Um, just a couple of caveats here with, with the TMC testing. Um, I received the TMC module uh, about two months ago now. Um, when I first hooked it up, I'll show you some footage here of the check engine lights that it was causing under wide open throttle, particularly when you start from zero miles per hour doing a launch. Um, and here's what was happening. We're going to do some troubleshooting. We just got the code. We just got lip mode. I have it floored right now, and you can see the speedometer is barely going anywhere. So we're in lip mode. I'm going to pull over here. And see if we can do some code reading. And it's the turbocharger wastegate range, so P024, that's probably an underboost code, so the mapping is not right on this unit. So it was pretty obvious what was going on there. It was uh, too aggressive of mapping, which back in the day when they created these maps, um, our cars had not had the W05 update, software updates. So you could get away with those maps uh, without having check engine lights. Uh, in March of 2020, um, they started doing those updates and the tuner box companies had to update their maps immediately or you'd get check engine lights. Um, you basically get an error with the um, electronic uh, wastegate uh, that would say hey why am I open only opening this much when I think I'm only making this amount of boost um, so you go into limp mode it's pretty dangerous like if you're passing on a two-lane road um, it usually happened right around you know 70 uh, to 90 miles an hour um, so I, I worked for literally you know the past 45 days with TMC to data log the car um, to do runs um, did remote data logging they were able to grab a brand new car from a dealership um, and spend an hour on that 
um, trying to get it right. Um, that didn't work. Um, and really, finally, um, we were able to, I think, get it right. So I'm gonna be running the absolute most aggressive setting you can with TMC that will not trigger a check engine light and will work with cars that have uh, the W05 um, update. So um, we're hoping uh, that this will go well. I'm gonna try um, three runs here. Um, if I get three clean runs out of it, then I can safely say that this is, you know, probably a decent map that you can run and have some fun with and not have to worry about check engine lights. Um, so this is setting number seven of their mo uh, their newest revision. Okay, so TMC first run here into the spot. Just have a little mark on the ground here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Here's the TMC box. We're at 1,350 feet density altitude. We're at 13.54 at 103.53. That's the important number, 103.53. Okay, and let's check out the 40 to 100. And the 40 to 100 is 9.62. 9.62. All right, getting ready for TMC run number two. spot here. still too aggressive. Like I said, I really wanted to try the most aggressive map um, that I could with them. And um, it's, I'm going to have to knock it down one notch here. So yeah, it works once, but it, you know, on the second run here, obviously um, it's, it's not fixed yet. Uh, and, and like I said, I mean, I really have been working on with this, the, with this, uh, with them for 45 days straight. Um, you know, I did pay you know, retail for this. It's, it's not like it was given to me for testing. And I feel like I've beta tested it for the past 45 days and and it would cost me 60 bucks to send it back to them. So uh, I'm just gonna change the settings here and um, see if we can get this thing to be more stable. Okay. All right, we're gonna try run number two again with the TMC box. Um, I backed it off just a little bit. So I, I really want to be able to show you guys the fastest map you can use with this box currently without running into any safety related issues of your car going into limp mode while you're trying to you know pass somebody on the freeway or something like that so uh, we're gonna get that done right now and here we go Density altitudes 1340 feet and we did a 13.59 and 103.56 and we'll check the we'll check the uh, 40 to 100 now and 40 to 100 9.72 all right, we're gonna do the TMC box now on run number three, and if we can get two runs in a row out of it without, um, you know, having a, a glitch uh, and throwing a check engine light, then that's good. And we can uh, probably recommend uh, setting uh, number nine is gonna be pretty safe to use here. So we're at the spot here. Two in a row out of this box. 
box. Um, I actually have it on the least aggressive setting that they will allow, uh, which is setting number nine. Um, and, um, you know, this, it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, you know, they, they need to put more work into this thing. Um, their mapping is off right at about 5,500 RPM is where they're off. I mean, I, I can actually see it in the logs. I've logged their, their box, I don't know, dozens of times now, and I, I can see where it's off. I try to explain it to them, and, um, it, it's, I mean, we're, there, I've had dozens of emails with them and, and spent hours trying to get, help them get their box right, and, they don't have, uh, you know, their own uh, Julia, and the way that they did the R&D is they borrowed a brand new car from the dealership that will be sold to a customer down the road, um, but they borrowed a new car for an hour and tested their new map, and, um, you know, lo and behold, uh, that, that approach to research and development does not always work, and, and it didn't in this case. Um, you know, green engines that have five miles on them don't always behave the same. Um, as our cars, you know, that even have a few thousand miles on them. Um, and, you know, an hour um, is, is not really enough time to, to test all different conditions. You know, weird part throttle, off throttle, full throttle inputs um, that can cause these types of glitches. So, um, you know, their box is not right. Um, and uh, it's been a real challenge um, trying to help them get it right. But um, um, I'm just... We'll go ahead and go with the results uh, that we have. Um, I've, I've been waiting to do this testing. I was really excited to do it. I, I bought the TMC box because I have a Stelvio, and I thought that'd be sweet just to have a little plug and play box that's, you know, as fast as the JB4. Um, you know, it certainly is not as feature rich, but, uh, but you can just throw it on there and, and try it out, and it's a good price, of course. And um, um, sometimes you do get what you pay for, so we'll, we'll wrap this up. Uh, with a uh, summary uh, with results uh, momentarily. Okay, time to crunch the data. The final results here. We have stock runs here. JB4 runs, one through three, and average for each of them, one through three and average. And then the TMC runs, one through three and average. We're gonna focus on the important numbers that indicate power, remember? So that's gonna be eighth mile uh, trap speeds, quarter mile trap speeds, Increases in the back half, which is um, the last eighth of a mile. That's the increase in mile per hour right there. And this is 40 to 100 mile per hour time. And time it takes to get from 40 to 100 miles per hour. So on the stock runs, you can see we average 82.11 mile per hour at the eighth mile mark. We average 102.80 miles per hour at the quarter mile mark. We picked up 20 miles an hour in the back half. And we were able to go 40 to 100 in 9.85 seconds. Okay. Now with the JB4, we saw some improvement there. We were able to get um, eighth mile trap went up from 82.11 in the stock form to 83.80 with the JB4. Quarter mile trap um, went up from 102.80 in stock form to 104.94, so just over two miles an hour there. Uh, we picked up 21 mile per hour in the back half, and we were able to go to 40 to 100 miles per hour in 9.15 seconds. And that's nice, so it went down from 9.85 stock down to 9.15. With TMC, we had a couple of runs that were faults, um, but we can see here it kind of split the difference. So TMC went from 82.11 stock um, in the quarter in the eighth mile trap to 82.28, picked up a little bit there. In the quarter mile trap, stock was 102.80, TMC was 103.55, almost a mile per hour, and did well in the back half, picked up 21 miles an hour, and it did the 40 to 100 in about 9.67 seconds with the stock car, remember, doing it in 9.85, so kind of split the difference there. So if we look overall crunching the data, what we're going to see is when you pick up for every roughly mile per hour in trap speed in the quarter mile that you're able to increase, you're going to be looking at roughly a 10 to 12-ish horsepower gain. Um, so here with the JB4 box, we picked up right around 25 horsepower um, with the TMC box, we picked up somewhere in the 10, maybe 12 horsepower range. Um, and that is what our data shows. 
So what does this data show? The data shows that the car can make power with a piggyback. Um, uh, it shows that on an 80 degree day, um, the car was able to pick up about 25 horsepower. Um, perhaps on a 40 degree day, there might be a little bit higher of a delta. Also, you're gonna see on a 40 degree day, all of these runs are gonna be higher. So um, this car will trap about 104 miles an hour on a 40 degree day with really good air. So it'll actually be about roughly 20 horsepower. Um, it'll make about 20 horsepower or more with no changes in mods whatsoever to it um, uh, on a cold air day. But likewise, I've also run over 107 miles per hour with the JB4 on that same cold day. So what, what we're seeing is that the increases will go up for all of these runs when you're in better air. That was the importance of collecting that data. But anyway, so what we found with this testing pretty assuredly is that the JB4 um, for for this this car on this day with these settings um, is 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 performing uh, the best uh, out of these uh, different runs. Okay, and thank you. That was a fun test. I enjoyed it, and hopefully we can do more.